good day. Today is Tuesday and we are going to talk about adventures in creation. I say what day it is because I know sometimes when you're a homeschool parent you forget what day it is. It's Tuesday. So we have to remind ourselves too. <laughs> We've been on the inside so many times. It's like how many times have you been on the island? I thought today was Wednesday this morning. Yeah, no, there was only one more check mark. There's only one. That. <laughs> Count the check marks. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about Adventures in Creation. This series, well, Adventures in Creation is level one. Uh, okay, let me go back. Read it. Read it. Uh, Let's Talk Science is the series name of our lower elementary science. And uh, level one is Adventures in Creation. Level two is the Adventures in the Physical World. It's physical science. So this would be general science, physical science. And then the new level three is Adventures on Planet Earth. Um, and that would be your Earth science. Now, as far as the series goes, there's a K level coming out. And then... Uh, and then there's also going to be a level four that comes out most likely next year. Level four will be adventures in the scientific method, which will be really cool. Nice. Okay, so we're going to do things a little different. Brittany's going to actually run around. She's going to help. Uh, she'll be talking from behind, but she's also going to grab the camera and we'll do kind of an overview as we walk through the book as well. So, where is it? I don't want to find uh, it. Got it. Yep. Also, just want to say hey to everybody jumping in. I see Julie, Jess, Vicky, Christy, Lauren, um, Kim now Kelly. A lot of people in there, so hello, good afternoon. Yeah. All right. You able to see all right? Mm hmm Okay. So, um, let's see. We'll just kind of do a brief walkthrough of everything. Uh, table of contents. The author, this beautiful lady, is actually my oldest daughter. Um, which is exciting. She is the author, and uh, my grandsons are actually in the book a couple places. It's kind of neat to see. So anyways, um, we have the table of contents, and actually this goes through the biomes, and so we have like um, introduction to ecology, then the boreal forest, uh, the climate, uh, the deciduous forest, or the temperate deciduous forest, uh, I'm reading these all backwards. The rainforest and the grasslands. So it gives some information on the teacher, or the information on the course, the components. In this one, the students will actually use their own notebook. Um, and then it has the materials that are needed in the course uh, and any elements that are here as well. Uh, so it gives some good instructions. There's three books of master books that um, are recommended. They're not mandatory, but they're recommended because they go along well and it actually tells like what lessons would work. So the Marvel's Creation, the Magnificent Mammals, the Breathtaking Birds, and the awesome God's Big Book of Animals, which this would also work in the zoology course uh, later on if you bought it. Materials list. I know one of the questions was, do they provide a material list? Yes, that's awesome. Uh, basic supplies that you're going to want, then the supplies for each week that you will want to have on hand for this course. So it's really easy to prepare all the way through. The daily schedule, and you can kind of follow the 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dot, 4 dots each day of the week as to what the students will be doing. This is a, let's see, five days a week course and uh, 180 days 36 weeks any questions um, do you know any idea what the K level will cover <laughs> I did and I should have gotten that before I came unfortunately I don't <laughs> um, ah, I'm sorry I don't we'll have to get that answer yeah okay so then the lesson day one, Intro to Ecology, and it's actually a discussion that's taking place. And so the discussion starts, and, and it's between, I think, a brother and a sister. I'm pretty sure it is. If not, it's two friends. 
Uh, Linda asked uh, how the dots work. If she said she thought it went up to four, so is it a four or five day a week? There is day five. Day five is like a nature journal in this one. Cool. So uh, day one, they're having their discussion. Day two, there's information happening and activity. Uh, day three, and the activity. Day four, the activity. And then day five, they have a journal where they're drawing. And so in this book, one of the things that was important to carry the author was that students attempt drawing, not that they necessarily have to be perfect at drawing. And so um, it's, it's that the student just does a good job and then everybody appreciates the work of the student. And so she had three different levels of artists that one that really enjoyed art, one that did it, and then um, kind of, I think she drew one of the pictures as well, just to provide. So when your student draws the picture of a squirrel, there's three options that they can choose, or not three options, but they have three examples of artwork so that your student's artwork is appreciated as well, no matter what their level of ability is. Hi, Michaela asked, first two books, it was only three days a week. Is this one five days because of more info on higher grade level? Just wondering. Yes, this ups it. So there's more, there's more being covered in this and um, a little bit more activity. So first and second grade were designed definitely based on the stamina of an average first, second grader. Again, um, in this one, here's the weekly materials list, which you would have had in the beginning, but dirt, clear bowl of jar, clear bowl or jar, uh, plastic wrap, paper towels, and a glass of water. And you have the, the dialogue that took place, the activity, day two, more information, um, activity. Let's see, so like this would be copy the sentence on the lines below. The climate is the typical weather an environment will experience during a year. And so, um, then if they want to dig deeper, there's a digging deeper where if you wanted to add a little bit, sometimes people will ask, could an older student do this? If you did that and you did the digging deeper, you could add um, quite a bit more to that. So as this is explaining climate, um, it says, ask your teacher to help you look up the average winter temperatures where you live. What is your climate like during the winter? And so you could add... Uh, multiple places. You could do a little more study on average temperatures of locations. You could deepen this up and thicken it up for, for an older student. Uh, day three, the materials needed for these activities. And so this would be an example of, of an activity. We have the materials list. Um, Permafrost creates a solid layer of earth water from melting <laughs> ice snow as well as rain cannot drain through it permafrost keeps water near the surface of the boreal biome and it helps the plants and animals that live there would you like to see how permafrost works i just read that upside down i'm amazing myself right at the moment <laughs> Okay, and so then it gives the instructions. Uh, students will take two to three pa paper towels in the bowl or jar, uh, place some of the dirt on top of the towel, and now slowly pour some of the water over the dirt. What happens, the water will sink through the dirt and some of the water will be absorbed by the paper towel. Uh, the tests, the rest of the water drains through to the bowl. Now remove the paper towel and empty the bowl. Stretch the plastic wrap over the top of, what's that say? The top of the bowl and add dirt to the top. Slowly pour water over the dirt again. What happens this time? The water cannot drain through the plastic wrap, so it stays around in the dirt in a puddle the plastic wrap acts like permafrost and keeps the water trapped above. Uh, be sure to clean up after your activity. And so uh, just an example of the boys doing that experiment where if you pour the water through and there's no permafrost and the water goes through and absorbs. If you have a permafrost and you pour the water in, 
it stops it and the water becomes much more moist. <laughs> Questions or comments? Mm -mm. No? I've amazed everybody with my <laughs> upside down reading skills. Day three and four, uh, something that I like in Master Books courses, uh, to me, science, science is about God's creation. And, and through learning about science, we're learning about God. And, and so many times, you'll hear people say, I don't think that we need to, to mix um, the Bible and education or the Bible and science. They're two separate things. And if you're studying God's creation, uh, you are learning about God and God's character. And so in this science, um, even there is incorporated in here about um, different spiritual character concepts that would go along with the science lesson. And so in this one, it's talking about um, being God's people and forgiveness. Uh, we can show mercy, kindness, and forgiveness to others because we know that God has also forgiven us. Where we forgive, we follow his example. What a neat lesson to learn from permafrost. And then there's actually the activity is talk about forgiveness as a family. Have you or someone else in your family forgiven someone even if it was hard? And so they're still getting uh, from the scientific lesson, they're getting some biblical concept as well. And then day five again comes to the drawings uh, and three examples given of a drawing. Linda said, we finished Adventures in Creation and I bought Physical World for next year, but my son begged to do it today. We might be in this new one sooner than I thought, lol. <laughs> That's awesome. It's an awesome story. Um, yeah, and so as it goes through the lessons, it follows pretty much the same thing. It's not an overwhelming science, but when, when people say, well, can we do more? Because of the digging deeper and because the concepts being taught actually are fairly... Um, you know, if, if you want to learn permafrost, it's pretty easy then to go and do some research on permafrost. Look at a couple of videos online, do some research, uh, where parts of the world, some geography. You could certainly add some more to it to thicken it up as a family and do some lessons. <laughs> Your AirPod Pro thing popped up, so I didn't know if the audio changed. So if anybody... If let us know if you can't hear us, but I think it should be good. Sometimes okay. when you put it in your pocket, it'll... Sometimes it'll go off. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So... There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll just kind of go through. Um, Kim now, Kelly said, one of my favorite things about Masterbooks is how Bible is part of every single course. Care for Teaching said, God created everything. It only makes sense to learn about God and his creation in a variety of subjects. And then Mindy said, yes, I love that it's not just a verse at the top of the page. It goes deep into our faith. Um, and Desiree said, we do a great disservice when we separate God from science because it is an important, or it is an opportunity to wonder uh, at who God is and, wor and worship him for his majestic beauty shown partially through what he has created. You're doing better at reading upside down <laughs> than I am upright. I was just kind of thinking that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so you can see the colors engaging. It's not overly complicated. Uh, I know it's there is a lot more content in this one uh, because as they were looking at the book size and the font size and everything, um, that was something that had to be taken into consideration. But I know that there was a lot of effort taken to make sure that it was easy to follow, easy to um, you know not feel overwhelming to the students so that they would get um, good application. So. Uh, yeah, we'll just kind of thumb through as I learn. Yeah, Let's see. And so as we go through, it follows that same format five days a week for the 36 weeks, and then, uh, let's see. Okay. It's week 36, uh, we have some bonus activities. So there's some extra ideas you can do to go along with uh, the course. Uh, some basic review, or basic phonics review, so as they're reading, 
just in case they need a little bit of extra help. Uh, the phonics review, uh, the glossary of some of the words that they're using. And again, this would be a great, um, the words, this could be some of the study that you do with older students as well. And then the answer key for where an answer is needed. And that's it. It's really a pretty, um, a pretty easy course, open and go, as far as that goes. But the concepts that they learn, and I know we have Science with Delaney uh, videos on Masterbook's YouTube channel for one, and we've done two. She's most of the way through two. I would imagine she's going to be jumping into three. I'm not sure yet, though. We don't know yet. Um, but most of the hands-on experiments are, are really easy to do. So it's not anything that takes a lot of technical skill or fancy equipment to be able to do it and learn about it. And uh, we're real excited about this course because I think um, as it builds, it's going to stop at level four and then it will move into the God's Design for Science series at level four. Awesome. Good. Any other questions? Tabby A says, it looks great. It's good to see you, Tabby. It was good to meet you at the convention the other week. I don't know that we've jumped on and said hey since then yeah hey tabby so yep cool so all right well we just want to give you a quick sneak peek on that we have also in-house revealing arithmetic i will be interviewing kate loop hannon tomorrow um that video will probably appear as an after video i might broadcast it into the facebook group i'm not sure just because the way we have to do interviews and the app doesn't allow me to do interviews quite the same but that video will be appearing in the Masterbooks app as well. Revealing Arithmetic is a really cool project that Kate did. Um, so that's something that you'll wanna, you'll, you'll wanna be looking for. If you're looking for additional help with math, uh, to have just kind of a resource for you or your student, and we even have videos, the video course is online as well. And that's called Revealing Arithmetic, so there'll be a lot more to come on that as well. Rachel asked, she said, I'm sorry, what grade is this for? This would be grade three, ideally grade three. Um, you could use it for grade three, four. Uh, if you did five or six, you would definitely want to supplement and add some to it. So it'd be one, two, and three, but the levels have a little bit of variation. You could do one and two, two and three, three and four as well. Awesome. J24 Cantor said, you two are so funny. I enjoy watching. Thank you. We try. <laughs> We're not trying to be funny. <laughs> All right, guys. Well. Hopefully that was helpful, and we, uh, we will be back on Thursday with a teaching tip. And, uh, but tomorrow there will also be a video somewhere uh, on, on revealing arithmetic. So, awesome. all right. All right. God bless you guys.